Desolatiata. Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Monday evening Desolatiata. We got some cool stuff to show off, some hardware demo. You wanted to uh, do a little bit of mailbag action, floating hell of Phil, floating head of Phil. That's right. Got some Hi. stuff from um, Adafruit, stuff from, oh there's a cat, mm -hmm. from the uh, mailbag, some eBay finds, uh, some stuff that came in from our orders, Okay. and more. What do you want to show off first? Well, uh, you're the star of the show. Let's get down to business, Lady Ada. Uh, I put a code in the chat. It's Sam to the D, because we're going to be talking about the Circuit Playground, Sam D, that you're bringing up. Yeah, I get to bring up this board. I st I, last time, I think like a week ago, I did a video stream, and it was for... Um, we basically found a mistake I made with assembling it, and... Um, I put the bootloader on, and we got that crystalless uh, bootloader working. And then I also made a crystalless Arduino um, core, so it doesn't require the crystal. So you want to go to the overhead? And we can look at it. Absolutely. So this is the overhead, new style overhead, and then which is the? What you want to do? Autofocus. Yeah, as soon as you get in there. Yeah, look at that. Woo! Okay. So it's got a very bright NeoPixel. Oh, maybe I can lock it. How do I lock the autofocus? I didn't read the manual yet. Oh boy. So this is the uh, Circuit Playground CMD. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a uh, at CMD processor here instead of an AVR processor. And it has some SPI flash. I removed the um, accelerometer and the sound sensor because those were causing me bring up problems, but I can always solder those on afterwards. And I thought I would just work on getting all of the different, um, all the different components up and running. Okay. What's this do? What? This flips it. That flips it, and then there's a freeze frame to do that. Okay. No, I'm just looking. Yeah. All right. So autofocus is kind of a thing that it does. Okay. Well, that's fine. All right. So I'm gonna go to my computer and I have to basically go through and um, write the demo source code that I wrote when I first brought up the board and I'm gonna actually change I've already decided a couple things I'm gonna change with this design I'm gonna change a bunch of the pins around and I'm going to change for example right now um, the accelerometer and SPI flash share the same um, SPI CIRCOM and I actually don't want to do that anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create another I squared C CIRCOM. I can even do that on the crystal pins because the CIRCOM is available. Um, so instead of having the accelerometer on SPI, I'll have it on I squared C. So I'll get to that later, but I could start by just getting you know, the LEDs, switches, you know, piezo, Temperature sensor, all that stuff up and running. So maybe I'll, I'll write some code. Did you want to, what did you actually want to do? Because I, I was going to just uh, write some code, but I don't know if you wanted to show off your. No, why don't, you, why don't you write some code? Okay. And then uh, first time, we'll show some other stuff. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so this is my. 
code. This is my original Circuit Playground demo code, and so I have to redo this now as SAMD code. So I'm going to save this as all demos. You play SAMD. And I'll just do one piece at a time. So starting with the red LED. The red LED is still on pin 13. So that's good. So I'll do the red LED first. And while not serial, click on SAMD, test, make it output, and then um, we'll just blink it on and off. So I'll start with that. And I already did this basically, so it should, it should work. And this is my board definition. I had to create a new one because it's, again, it doesn't have a crystal, so it needs a new definition so it knows to design boards. Okay, so can you go to the overhead? Yeah, I'm, uh, I thought I was going to have the opportunity to do some shot stuff. Okay, that's so right. LED is blinking, so that's good. Okay, so I'm going to go back now, and I'm going to work on the slide switch. So the next thing is the slide switch pin. Let's do that next. Slide switch pin is on, I think I started this one. It's on A2, is that true? Yeah, okay, so A2. I'm going to rename this to B. Okay, so um, for this, I wanted to have this be a pull-up because I changed, I changed the design. The previous design had each side of the um, switch connected to power and ground, but that is a little bit risky. There's a very small chance that if it's a make-before-break switch, which it, I don't think it is, but if it is, it could accidentally short power and ground. So I decided and said, let's just have a pull-up on there instead because it's it's free why not okay we have to does this sometimes detects the wrong board okay so now when I slide the switch where do you want to go to um it's not working that's kind of cool is on the right, which is ground. Slide switch. Okay. Interesting. Why would it be? Maybe I got the wrong pin name. Maybe it's not A2. Sometimes I change things around. So let's, let's see where this goes. Soldered. Hmm. Fifth pin? Yeah, fifth pin. Okay, I'm gonna go quickly and. Well, I'll turn on the iron and then I'll go and solder this after. After a little bit. I can skip ahead to the next. Next section. Okay, so that pin just happened to be disconnected. Okay, let's do the left button and the right button. Do those. So the left button is, where's the buttons? There they are. Left button is PA28. Ooh, that's a weird, that's a weird pin. It's not a standard pin. So let's go to the SAMD package. Look at the variant and see what that's called. PA20, oops, PA28. 
That's GPIO 27. Okay. So left button is 27. And right button is 12. Okay. So let's see if we can get the buttons working. While well, the soldering iron heats up. What are you, what are you doing? Transparencies. I'm in the computer. Okay, so let's see. Oh, I forgot. I have to turn these into pull downs. These are now pull down because I removed the pull downs because. SAMD actually has a really nice ability to do pull down uh, internally. So say it's like two components, kind of nice. here. These buttons are not working either. Oh, I uncommented it. Right. I should recomment it. Don't forget to compile the code you actually want to run. And they'll test the NeoPixels after this. Okay, so the right button works. Right button is pressed. Left button, not so much. Maybe I got that pin number wrong. It says it's 27, but maybe I'm incorrect. I kind of didn't test this stuff beforehand. I sort of just went, sort of went to town. Could be it's also not soldered. button PA28. That's definitely it's definitely GPIO 27. Hmm. Let's see where this pin goes. Maybe I have to hit this one up. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Soldered. Hmm. And then this is the V three three plane. <coughs> okay, well right button works. That's good. Maybe have a jumper. Just uh I'll hand poke that trace just just in case. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Oh right. weird. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. So left button press does work, so it's actually Yeah, it might not be soldered either. It's a the cold solder joint. Okay, let's check out the iron. Kind of weird. I mean, I guess I could have damaged the button during the. Um, I did a lot of rework, so it's possible. button. 
I think I, I think I got like a cold solder crack and it's just like I can barely see it's not completely attached. Worth a try. Okay, left button. And then I also needed to hit up under here. Yeah, it looked good. Okay. Let's try this again. Slide switch, it's, oh, this stuff is still not working. That's cool. What's weird is why, why is the slide, the switch not working? Because that was like, if I broke the switch inside. And now it's working. Weird, but it's like delayed. Okay, well it's working now. Okay, right button, left button is working. Slide switch is still not working. Okay, let's take a look at this slide switch pin. On the right, connected to ground. On the left, connected to nothing. So it thinks it's permanently ground. Um, one, two, three, four. Nah, it's bridge. And maybe it's bridge underneath. That should be kind of unfortunate. Because I just like touched it and it, uh, it went away. This is the exciting part of doing hardware. And now we wait. And we hand poke. Yeah, there's a lot of hand poking. There's something about this three volt, this plane on the left. It's a little bit weird. This three volt plane is not is not connected through. I wonder if um, I wonder why. It should be connected through to. Maybe the plug isn't working? Definitely have a pull up. Kind of unusual. Alright, well I'm gonna continue on. Because I got the buttons got the buttons working. Okay, next step I'm gonna test the NeoPixels. Alright, NeoPixels are on pin PB22, otherwise known as GPIO30. Let's try Let's try that.
Okay, that's kind of nice. So you've got NeoPixels are working because you've got all of the colors lighting up. So that's that's good. So we've got that left, works. Left button. Left button is still being a little weird, but I think there's. I think it's when I reworked this area. I think I kind of messed this button up. Left button. Could have to like press it down. Left button. Right button. Slide switch is still being miserable. But whatever. Okay. So that wasn't too bad. Um, light sensor. Light sensor is analog, so it's going to be pretty easy. Okay. Light sense is on A5. So let's. Oh, did move. That's still on the same pin. And while I'm at it, I'm going to do the thermistor also. Because why not? Very similar. Okay. Thermistor. Is on what pin? D3. Oh, you know what this is? So this is not a normal analog pin, but I wanted to make an analog pin. So I said PA0. Mm, yeah. So this is interesting. So this pin is an analog pin 17. But I don't know if I finished editing the code for this. Oh, this is too wide. So zero, one, two, three. Oh, I didn't make this analog. Okay, so this is ADC pin 17. So this is 17 and this is 16. So temperature is A17. And sound sensor will be A16. That's not actually going to have any going on there because it's um I popped that part off yeah not sure why the slide switch is being bad okay well temperature's wrong light sensor Oh yeah, the light sensor's working, for sure. Okay, so that's good. It's just confused because there's like also stuff, yeah, so there's, there's NeoPixels nearby. Okay, so the light sensor's working. Temperature is not working. Solder is a good holding device. Okay, so Light sensor, good. Thermistor pin, not so good. Question from the chat. What is yeah. the variant .ccp file for? Oh, this is the, the uh, sorry. This is the definition for Arduino that tells it what all the pins do. Oh, you know what? I have to change this from PIO timer to PIO analog. That's why. So you have to like set up all the pins and, and their configurations. So I'm gonna make this analog and this analog by def default. You actually, that's kind of like. What's the, the analogy? Is this like a startup thing? Like, what is what it's is like that? It's a con configuration file. Config.ini? Yeah, it's a configuration. All right. All right, and then after this, I have to solder back that speaker to continue. I can test the buzzer, that's the only thing left, but the sound sensor and the accelerometer are left off. Mm -hmm. And the capacitive touch isn't going to work either, and I'm going to actually do something different with the capacitive mm -hmm. touch. Um, We'll talk about in a bit. Oh, still not working. Light sensor's working, temperature's not working. Hmm. Kind of weird. Hmm. PA09. Should be 
A17. Hmm. And just to be clear in the chat, they said uh, I'm adorable. You're adorable? Mm -hmm. well, you are adorable, yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah, good work. It was on the internet, so it must be true. Yeah, this is their mystery. It's not so good. I'm going to look on the scope real fast to see if the reading is off. Or maybe it's reading from a different pen. Who knows? I'm getting data, but it's, it's wrong. It's wrong data. Surprise scope cam. Surprise scope cam. Nobody expects a surprise scope cam. Nope. It's way better than the dishwasher cam that I had for a while. Seriously. Okay. So let's probe here. Oh, it's very slippery. I'll um, actually just test the analog pins by. No, this is totally giving me wrong, wrong readings. But the fact that it works on the light sensor means that there's just something. There's probably just something amiss with the um, the core. It's not reading that pin. It's reading some other pin or something. Because the light sensor is like, is like great. Move this. Yeah, light reading is going up, light reading down. Okay, so I gotta, I gotta dig into the variant. The core. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta dig into this core a little bit. So here, core, Arduino. I think they put the exception code. Maybe I have to put the exception code. Uh, yeah, we're going to mess with this. If the pin is less than five, oh, maybe I didn't. Did I define A17? Maybe I can define it. Yeah, go play with it. I'd like to turn off autoflex, but I'll see a way to do it. It just keeps doing it no matter what I do. I'm like pressing hold and there's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing. Nope. Nope. If I back it out, maybe, and then look. I'll stop this. Yeah, it just doesn't, it freaks over near fitness. That's good enough. Hey, we gotta like try all these. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to stop it from doing that. Oh, you know what? It's because of this. It's because the pin is a digital pin. I have to remove this. Um, this here was supposed to. Be, so you know, there's some really old code that used to do analog read zero, analog read one. So this code is trying to help it, but be like, oh, if you put in digital pin three, you probably meant analog pin three. But in my case, since the pins, digital pin three is analog 17, I just gotta just take out, I gotta take this out. Because um, it's reading totally like off into, it's going off into space. It's reading um, A3, not, D3. Space pin. Space. 
Yeah, it's confusing because pin A3 is digital 17 and digital 3 is, like, A17 and A3 are, like, completely swapped. A17 is digital 3, A3 is digital 17. So that's a little annoying. Um, so I'll just, I'll just remove this. If pin equals 6... Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's let's try this updated. I think it's fine. I don't know. I mean, I guess there's some people who are going to have... If you have very, very old Arduino code and you have, like, analog read zero, maybe that wouldn't work. We'll see if this works. Maybe I'll change the code around to be a little different. Can you auto detect yeah. what processor it's on and have it not do that based on the processor? <laughs> I could, and maybe maybe I'll do that. But now it's working, so now you're seeing the temperature. So that was at, that was definitely it. So yeah, I could do else. I could put a thing like if not defined, and then look for this circuit playground. Just be like, hey, this is a very specific circuit playground weirdness. And I gotta remember what the definition is. So Arduino SMD Circuit Playground Express. So, I can do that. Make sure it still works. I don't want, I don't want to probe this switch. Why? Can we go to scope cam? So this is okay. So three v three, correct. Why is this? Whoa. Oh, I'm doing something weird here. Okay. That pin is being reused for something. Okay, so I it's got. It's jumping, so. Yeah, I don't know. It's a little. It's like it's getting pulsed or something. I think I might be. I might. Maybe my code, I haven't finished looking at my code. There might be a, a section where I do something with that pin, and I forgot to mm. comment it out. Okay, light sensor works, thermistor works, left button and right button work. So, slide switch pin A2. Oh, you know what? What's the digital name of that pin? Maybe that has something. Let me look at the variant and see. A2 is also known as 16. Oh, you know what? No. Sound sensor? What is messing with that pin? Maybe it's the capacitive touch? Could you comment oh, out? Oh, here it is. No, you know what? I had this, it, I forgot to change the cap sense shared pin. So that's, that's being weird. That was going to be my second suggestion. That was not your suggestion at all. I was going to say comment out what it's currently doing and then see yeah. what, yeah. See. So yeah. that actually is PB23. So let me... Find. PB23 is 31. So this is. Yeah, I should have put this up here. Otherwise. So that just means the accelerometer, but the accelerometer gets, I'm going to change that. I'm going to take that off of SPI and I'm going to put it on I squared C. Um, okay, so now I can, yeah, now the slide switch is working. Yay, slide switch is working. Left. Okay, so I think everything's, everything so far is working, so that's good. I'm going to just remove this thermistor print out, and then I want it to beep. So let's do the buzzer. That's the last <coughs> item that's available that was not destroyed. So buzzer, buzzer is on speaker, which is on pin A02. So then let's go to the variant again. PA2, that's pin 14. Okay, buzzer's on pin 14. Uh, 
also known as analog zero. Change that to. Yeah, it's got this weird hiccup when it uploads. Okay. Hmm, I didn't beep. Pin mode buzzer output. 14 PA. Oh, it says not. Well, I shouldn't matter if it's on a timer. Okay, and then I think in my code I made it so if the switch is to the right, it beeps. So the switch is on the right. Let's probe. There's absolutely nothing coming up out of this buzzer pin. No. Nope. Nothing. Not a. Oh, why did I hard code this? Okay. Don't hard code things. That's why it's not working. Okay, and then the light sensor. Why are you testing that? Oh, this is a sound sensor. So now I gotta test once I fix that, and the accelerometer and the cap touch. Okay. Okay, and then. Okay. So, good annoying beeps. Alright, so that's good. So you've got pretty much everything working. Um, and then the capacitive touch. So the capacitive touch actually decided, um, I'm not gonna bother trying to get the cap touch library to work because there's um, self-capacitance capability in the SAMD um, processor. So the way you traditionally do um, capacitive touch. Oh, can you go to the um, computer? is you have you know one mega ohm resistor and you have one pin and you pull it up and then you let go of the pin basically and then you wait to see how long it takes for it to discharge and basically you're using um the the capacitance from this pin you know there's this fake capacitance from each of these pins to ground and so you see like how long does it take for it to discharge um through the capacitor and um like, yeah, you basically toggle and you wait, and then you just, or, yeah, you have a pull-up. I don't remember exactly the, the details. Basically, you're, you're, you're basically making an RC filter with one mega ohm resistor and then the couple picofarads capacitance. And it's fast enough that the um, microcontroller can pick it up. Um, but the thing is, you, need, you lose a pin, and you have to have these four resistors, these one mega ohm resistors. And you actually don't need that on the SAMD. It has a peripheral touch controller. So... It is a built-in ability to either do XY grids, like a you know, capacitive touch grid, which is cool, because that's kind of like what you get on your iPhone. Or you can do self-capacitance mode, in which if, it's, if the pins are on a Y pin, when you touch it, it will automatically detect that capacitance. So it has like, it, it, you know, it's kind of neat. You have, um, no, you have no external uh, components. It's... Um, can do auto calibration for you. And basically, you know, you're using the Q-Touch um, core. And I guess there's, you know, there's all this stuff built in, compensation circuitry. Um, you have to uh, use um, the Q-Touch. You're probably gonna have to use the ASF, the, the software framework, and it'll have some sort of code that would um, do this for you and basically like pipe out for, you know, you basically say like, you know, do a capacitive touch thing or do an IRQ and let me know when it's ready. Um, the deal is though, it has to be on a Y line because there's the X lines and the Y lines and X lines aren't self-capacitive, only the Y lines are self-capacitive. And I think Y lines 
our um, PTC input, and I think they're not, not every pin is on a Y line. There's a lot of pins on the Y line, so these are Ys over here, if you look at the PTC under the multiplexing staff. So there's a lot, but it's not every pin, and not every analog pin either. It's, it's just a certain subset of pins. So you've got, um, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You have like 14 pins that can do it, which is great. We need eight, but not the pins that I picked for, um, the pins on the right happen to all be on the Y, you know, type of capacitive touch but the pins on the left are not. So what I wanna do is rather than go through and try to get the core working with like, you know, the, built the Arduino capacitive touch sense library, I'd rather just use the ASF core and figure out like what's the code that you have to do to get it to do the self capacitance. And then I save a pin, which is handy. And I don't need to use those four resistors because I'll use the built-in self capacitive mode. So it'll be kind of nice because it's like, the 70 processor is powerful enough to do this. I might as well have it do the internal capacitance mode, you know, get that off of my plate, and it can also happen in the background. All right. So what you're saying is you need a capacitor. I, I don't need a capacitor. You don't. Yeah. And I'm going to get rid of this crystal stuff here, and then so I'm going to get rid of these four resistors. I'm going to get rid of this cap push line. And what I'm going to do is instead of having... The accelerometer on SPI, I'm going to take it off of SPI and I'm going to put it on um, um, I squared C instead. So I'm going to get rid of S clock mostly MISO and then and chips select. And I'm going to instead put it on, um, I'll get rid of flash CS and then maybe cat push. And then between the two, I'll find two pins that I'll rearrange to clear up one of the circoms, probably circom five, because I think. Circum 5 or 4 is kind of available. Because the slide switch, for example, can be on any pin. It doesn't matter. Um, I'll keep using the SPI, the, the default SPI for the um, flash chip, but I'll move, I'll move these pins around to get two in a row on a Circum 0 and 1 and put the accelerometer on that, and that way the accelerometer and the flash don't share any pins, which I think would be, if I have pins to spare, I'd rather do that. Have them be completely separate, that way they don't interact, especially when using um, uh, MicroPython on the SAMD processor, and then SPI flash is storing your code, so it's like accessed constantly. I don't want that to have inter have any interactions with the accelerometer. And the nice thing about this accelerometer is it works great under I2C or SPI. It was only on the ABR circuit playground I kind of had to share those pins with the programming interface because like those were the only pins available. And you, of course, you don't have circoms. You're kind of stuck with whatever you got. Okay. So that's that's next. So I'm probably going to not bother. I'm going to test the sound sensor. I'll get that sound sensor tested, but I'm not going to test the accelerometer. Instead, I'm going to redesign the board, and then Wednesday I'm going to send out another round of prototypes with this, the circoms split apart. So for the rest of tonight, are you going to work on this or are you going to play Final Fantasy XV? I'm going to play Final Fantasy XV. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going to work a little bit. I have a little bit more work to do. So Actually, I'm going to work on the NRF52. We, we all don't see it, yeah. so, you know, when the cameras go off, I'm still, like, I'm me, so I'm kind of like a camera. And I'm watching Lady play Final Fantasy XV, and I'm like, that looks interesting. And It's been five years. It's a boy band. You, so you run a boy band. I just and you I've always wanted and you, to be a boy band. And you, and, Ride you, and you push a car through the desert while you're in leather. Phoenix Downs. That's the game, as far as I can tell. Phoenix Downs sounds like a, like a name of like cool band. That's what their, their, should, their band should be called. Phoenix Downs? Phoenix Downs. Sounds like a coat company in Soho. Um, yeah. All right, you want to show a couple of little odds and ends? Yeah, why don't you show some stuff? Okay, so I got my, I got my board ring up that was mostly painless. Yeah. So let's show off some other stuff. Okay. Um, you have a, you have yeah, a, I got um, some stuff here. Okay, so first, mailbag. Uh, yeah, first up, um, my um, so I have all these like e RSS feeds from eBay, and I've been looking for this one for a long time. This is the worst uh, toy you could ever get in like 1984. Um, this is a Dune sandworm, and it's uh, just a it's, it's a worm, 
It's a large posable monster from beneath the desert surface. Ages four and up. Um, I did not get this to a four-year-old. Yeah. And uh, sandworms are monstrous creatures that have lived under the desert surface, protecting the precious spice from those who seek it. They strike by surprise from another sand and devour everything in their path. Although sandworms are feared by all on planet Dune, Fremen warriors have the ability to mount and ride them into battle. That's a bunch of other stuff. But this is here. And, uh... Horrible. Yeah. This is it. 20 bucks. This was an old, this was an old one, but I, um... I'm taking some photos. This is just a Dune coloring book. This is also terrible. Um... Two bucks. Uh, but... When you look at the... Sandworm. Yeah, when you look at the, the things that they wanted you to color... It's like an activity book. Yeah. Gurney. Um, I don't... Gr Gurney Halleck? Yeah, I mean, like... What was the name of the other guy? There's Gurney Halleck, and then there was his... Um, Duncan. Duncan Idaho? Yeah. Or is that like a... Or is that like some sort of, like, Twinkie manufacturer? I don't remember. Yes. All sorts of science. But, um... There's other ones. Uh, picture search. Try to find... Space Navigator. And then, um... It's all sorts of weird things. Um, so we'll see what else comes in the mail. Yeah. Is that Hazrak? Um, so that came in. And then um, the other thing that came in, uh, I also had a, uh, I'm gonna go overhead. Here you go. This is my next pin. This is from 1996. It's another one I had an eBay watch for. came in. Maybe zoom in on that. Yeah. So enamel pins are big now. This is old. Probably ought to focus up. Need some light. Yes, that's neat. And then um, other stuff that came in. Uh, if you if you back it out and and show the data detox kit. So we went to the Mozilla um, called the Glass Room. And it's a pop-up store that just teaches people about privacy. They don't sell anything there. And uh, if you go to the, the back area and uh, the booth, you can ask for one of these little kits. And it just goes through all this uh, data cleansing. And it basically teaches you about good passwords and encryption and all the things that you can do to reduce your online footprint and more. It's called The Glass Room. It's from Mozilla. Um, it's really neat. They have uh, little questionnaires and everything. Um, I posted up some videos from uh, my, oddly enough, Snapchat spectacles um, of uh, inside of the uh, event space with all of the uh, different booths and stuff. So anyways, get that going on. And then um, get those out of the way. Uh, on one of our previous Decibel ideas, we had uh, played around with Echo, uh, which is like a little tiny version of Amazon's Alexa. And Echo added itself to its own shopping list. And uh, I said, OK, sh sure, I mean, good try. So uh, we got another one. It was like, I don't know, 30 bucks or something because it was Cyber Day. And the new version, this is Gen 2, they have, um, you can definitely tell they're trying to cut costs now. So it's definitely a, a cheaper feeling device. It's not as heavy. It's not as... Um, this one has the rotating ring. Yeah, the rotating this ring one doesn't. Um, is, uh, is a really nice feature. But uh, this one, you do the volume on the top. And uh, this difference is they're, they're using a different um, finish. And it definitely isn't like the, the designy, um, glossy photos that you first saw when the Echo came out. Oh, here you go. There's a light that's built in. Yeah, so you can see it from the side. That's the first gen, and that lived in our kitchen for a while. And uh, I like that one the best, the first gen. And then the the second gen. Um, it's definitely like plasticier. Yeah. It's just like it's 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 much thinner. It's a lot less heavy too. Like this is like really dense. And this is like you know, it's yeah. it's sizable, but it's just not heavy. Yeah. So there's the that's the mailbag. Okay. All right. So that's just Lady Lady Ada. Um, we have a discount code. It's let's say I'm to the D. Use it in the Adafruit store all the way up to 11:59 p.m. Eastern time. Support open source hardware in a cool company that broadcasts from their bedroom. On a regular basis. It's cool. It says Union Made on the back. Yeah. Back when pins were pins, I like men were men, like, women were women. It's kind of like clunky. Yeah, it's it still has a protective coating on it. Don't tear that on. Yeah. 
Okay, here's the next. Okay. You can wear it. Yeah. With pride. Okay. So that's it, everybody. See everybody maybe tomorrow. Maybe we'll do another one. Woot. Okay, like an owl. I know. Okay, that's this lady. Say wow. bye. Say bye. Bye.